I do want to get your thoughts here just on the moves that we saw this week because it was a wild ride for Treasury. A lot of people looked at that sell off and said, this is it. Keep driving those rates higher. And then we got that wake up call today. First sign of trouble. You know where people run. They run to the dollar and they run to the U.S. Treasury market. Yeah, that's that's right, Romine. I would I would say that we've been really proven correct in our guidance to investors to be patient on adding duration. Really largely looking at this range between four and four fifty for the ten year. When we saw rates approaching this 450 level as of close yesterday, we were saying that this is a nice level for investors to begin adding to duration and moving long. Mm -hmm. um, the Fed cuts are getting pushed back. Our own U.S. econ team has pushed back the timing of cuts from June to December this year. But it's still cuts that are on the table, not hikes. Uh, and when we have a Fed that's that's still committed to lowering rates, you still have a strong buyer base of investors looking to buy the dip here. Mm -hmm. And and really, again, as as you mentioned, Treasuries are the risk free asset class. I, I am I, I am curious though on that point, Megan. And maybe you can't answer this question because this kind of gets more into investor psychology. But why don't you think we've seen a more fuller on embrace? of duration. I mean, let's just set aside what happened today. I mean, there were right. the, everything you said, I, I mean, that's that, to me, that seems like common sense. But there are a lot of folks, you know, that just don't believe it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So, you know, it really has been a meaningful repricing of rates to start the year, a, a year that has felt very similar to last year, where investors were set up to be long duration. We see that in our FX and rate sentiment survey that we conducted at B of A just published this morning. Uh, investors were quite long U.S. rates again headed into, into the start of the year, expecting a Fed that was going to be cutting sooner. So it is this pain trade for the market to have seen rates sell off as much as they have. And alongside that, we have seen some moderation in those U.S. duration longs. We have, though, seen investors embrace with kind of two hands this long duration view that we see in the euro area, where we have an ECB listening to Lagarde yesterday that's still set up to cut in June. And so we're looking at a, a sooner, perhaps faster cutting cycle in some of these other regions than what we have in the U.S. So it's a combination of that, the macro data, the, the central bank narrative, and then also the relative positioning that we've seen from, from investors that's contributed to these moves. So, Megan, notwithstanding the move that we saw in Treasuries today, is 5% still inevitable on the 10-year? So, Scarlett, we think 5% would be a level that a lot of investors would flock into to buy rates. 5% is achievable if we do have the Fed putting hikes back on the table. Uh, as we know and as we talk a lot about in the Treasury market, there's ample amount of Treasury supply given the size of deficits. Yeah. But what we really have seen is a very strong buyer base. And again, that's kind of a buy it well last mentality that we have from investors with expectations that Fed cuts are on the horizon. If those cuts come out more fully, 5% becomes more possible. And we saw that investor sentiment get tested in a couple of the auctions earlier this week, but we saw tails at. Um, though, again, kind of the, the sentiment that we're feeling this morning and, and during, during the trading session today is still endorsing this fact that Treasuries have this risk off behavior. When, when we see financial conditions tightening, when we see the equity market selling off, investors are going to run uh, to, to Treasuries. Yeah, absolutely. And that's playing out today. Um, when it comes to the credit markets, uh, we have incredibly tight spreads here for investment grade and for high yield, certainly the higher quality ones. Um, how is that looking based on the survey that you conducted on sentiment? So sentiment right now um, is shifting in terms of that general view from investors to want to be long duration. And I say, you know, kind of duration more broadly, that a big part of that is also the duration exposure that we see investors get in, in IG and high yield. Um, though when you look at this, and one of the flows reports that I do on a weekly basis still shows that there's ample amounts of inflows into fixed income, into these ag benchmark, mark, excuse me, ag benchmark funds mm -hmm. that have to go out and deploy that liquidity. And what do they do on the back of that? They either buy treasury futures or they're putting that, that to work in spread space and buying IG high yield. So still seeing a fair amount of inflows um, in, into duration. I would say that more broadly, this long conviction from investors is moderating a bit, mm -hmm. and really that's driven by, and what, what our what our FX and rate sentiment survey shows is is a pivot in terms of how um, our, our 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 surveyed participants are thinking about that Fed terminal rate of the cycle. So instead of getting to a level closer to three percent, investors are thinking that that will sit closer to three and a half, yeah. three seventy five, which is really consistent with how our econ team is thinking about things too.